In my opinion is the industry will reshape, will be like an earthquake. Um, mm-hmm. the, uh, the most uh, experienced agent, uh, the agents, they survive, they will adapt. Some of the agents, they will disappear from this yeah. field because they were, they were working just on the buyer side and they're struggling. Even if the seller was paying that commission, they were struggling selling mm-hmm. on the buyer side. Now imagine they have to convince the buyer, the buyers that they have value and now they have to be paid mm. by the buyer, yeah. you know, for buying a home. Yeah, I want to start with, um, you know, what happened um, last week um, in the United States. Um, so, uh, was a lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors um, and um, uh, sued by uh, you know, a group of um, sellers, um, and uh, they had uh, some, um, you know, um, let's say, great lawyers that they held them, um, and then then the NAR settled uh, settled that um, that lawsuit for I don't know, 481 million dollars. So that lawsuit was uh, brought by um, a group of sellers from I think Kansas City and um, was suing the uh, National Association of Realtors based on the fact that they fixed the commission. Mm -hmm. Like in the United States, the average uh, commission was 6%. So so they settled the lawsuit, uh, which will change the um, entire real estate industry. Probably, I don't know, in Canada will follow uh, soon. Because what happened in the United States will follow in a um, you know, couple of months, maybe years. Um, so, but that, that is not great news for the industry and for the people. And for the people. And I explain you why. So basically, um, uh, before that, um, you know, in North America was the, mo- the most, um, let's say, advanced system okay. in order to sell um, you know, the people homes. So what it was, um, so on the, if the property went on the MLS, um, the seller was paying for both, for the seller side and for the buying side. Yes. So the seller was paying even for the buyer agent representing the buyer, which was great because, you know, uh, it was, uh, you know, plain, like a very fair was on the MLS. Yeah. So nobody can, you know, was a, was a fair uh, commission. And then the buyer agent was sure that they got paid by the seller, okay, in order to help them to sell their property because they were acting on the buyer behalf. And believe me, it's a lot of work in the buyer side. So what do you just, mean? Um, yeah, what do you mean when you say a lot of? It's work? a lot of work because um, you know the buyer agents uh, usually they have to drive uh, I don't know hundreds of miles or kilometers okay. to maybe thousands sometime to uh, find the you know the. Um, the home that the, their clients they like, uh, so they have to drive maybe I don't know to show uh, 10 homes, 20, 50, maybe sometimes 100 homes, uh, and they have to pre-qualify the buyer. So they have to uh, put the buyer in contact with a mortgage broker to find out if you know for how much do they qualify for, and it's a lot of work, you know. Like um, and then uh, after that um, they start working and seeing properties in multiple occasions mm-hmm. depending on the market let's say if it's a seller market it's even harder because um, they encounter multiple offers and imagine in, let's say they like a home and there are 20 offers on it or 10 offers you know the probability will be 10 percent uh, or maybe you know five percent that they can get their, those home based on the number of offers. So the buyer agent has to be very knowledgeable, very professional to get them the home. Okay. So, um, you know, it, it takes like a process, you know, helping buyers to buy a home in a buyer side, maybe two months, three months, four months, even more. So now what they said is the new rule is they don't allow on the MLS system in the United States to give a commission to cooperating broker. Okay. So, which means the buyers from now, they have to pay their buyer agent in order to buy a home. And beforehand? Before, like, before, uh, at, at the closing. At the, at the closing. At the closing. So, oh, they have okay. to now, so now, um, you know, even before, um, you know, the, the buyer agent is supposed to sign a buyer agency with their clients, 
uh, that you know outline the fact that they represent them they you know they have a code of ethics they have to be fair with them they have to provide professional service uh, accountability uh, transparency everything so but the buyer was happy to sign that because it was for free mm -hmm. basically so the buyers went to see their homes with the, their buyer agent. They were so happy when they found the, the real home, the, the, you know, they, they like, then, uh, you know, the, the seller was paying the, the commission. Now, with the new rules, um, they, um, you know, they, uh, they ban the, everything on the MLS uh, paying the buyer agent. So now what's going to happen, you know, if a buyer wants to uh, use a buyer agent, which is very smart, by the way, even if they pay something mm -hmm. like probably up to 2.5% or 3%, I don't know uh, exactly because the, you know, the real estate industry will reshape and uh, we'll see, um, we'll see uh, how it will go. And, um, you know, the agent, they, they have to just to adapt, let's say. Uh, okay. But now they have to sign a front of buyer agency and to uh, sign, you know, the commission that they will provide to the buyer agent to help them to buy out. This is the best way, uh, the way to do it. Why? Because that buyer agent is bound by RICO um, uh, code of ethics, uh, and they they are sure that they don't get a uh, like a house overpriced. They don't buy a house overpriced or about that have uh, problems. Okay, if they, if they decide just to go direct to the listing agent is very dangerous. Okay. Why? Because, you know, the, buyer, the listing agent is working for the seller. Of course, yes. And they want to get the best price for the seller, not for the buyer. Yeah. Okay. And probably they, they, uh, they don't tell everything about the house. Mm -hmm. They hide something, maybe something important. Yeah. And uh, maybe they can price the house much more overpriced that the buyer is willing to pay, but they don't know. And that they're ending up not saving 2.5, they maybe they end up paying maybe 10% more, and they they didn't know. So basically, this is the worst case. So when the buyer decides to go to the, the listing agent, and they don't have, they don't provide, the, you know, the full service. Okay, if they don't pay anything, imagine. So if if let's say the listing agent want to represent the buyer, they will mm -hmm. ask for a, a compensation. Mm -hmm. They're not doing for free. Yeah. So their work is just to sell their home, but not not working with the buyers. With the buyers, it's it's a different it's a different scenario. So what what I mean, I, what I what I believe, in my opinion, is that industry will reshape, will be like an earthquake. Um, <laughs> the uh, the most experienced agent, uh, the agents, they survive, they will adapt. Some of the agents they will disappear from this yeah. field because they were they were working just on the buyer side. And they're struggling, even if the seller was paying that commission, they were struggling selling mm -hmm. on the buyer side. Now imagine they have to convince the buyer, the buyers that they have value and now they have to be paid mm -hmm. by the buyer, yeah. you know, for buying a home. So it's a little bit uh, a different dynamic. And, and it's a lot to take in. It's a lot of information. Yes. Even for real estate agents who are like experts in the field. Yeah. Uh, it's like a natural uh, selection, you know, like an yeah. ecosystem. It, yeah. it feels like it's, it's the same right now. It's only one, the ones who actually, they know exactly what they do, like you, right? It's not for any kind of agents, like a part-time agents or weekly agents. They're for people like you spending, I don't know, 10 hours per day working with the client, for yeah. the client, no inside out the laws and everything and and you know the funny part in all this is you know these smart lawyers that brought that this um, mm -hmm. cloth uh, lawsuit um, class lawsuit um, you know they uh, they make them the most of the money the sellers they made some money that they, you know but they maybe they made some pennies on the dollar mm -hmm. um, um, and the big winners probably they will be, the, as I said, the lawyer, the second, probably the seller. Mm. But if you think about in a different perspective, let's say, um, you know, now the buyers are paying the, those fees. Um, those buyers probably today, they can buy, you know, the seller homes, but because now they have to pay another 2.5% to the, you know, to the buyer agent, they have to save another one year or two years, uh, you know, um, doing that. Mm. Well, Marius, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. How long have you been a real estate agent? Since 2005. 
Yeah. So almost 18 years. 18 years. Listen, you work so hard. You're top 100 agent worldwide, which is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you so that. much, Scott. And you don't just help people sell or buy homes. You do the whole pack. How, so, how do you know what to do to a house in order to increase its value? Um, I learn from you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, and, so you're a pro then. Should, yeah. <laughs> so I try to, you know, explain people that if they, you know, improve their, you know, like with a new countertop, a new flooring, a new bathroom, a new kitchen, they will, you know, like for each dollar, they will get maybe one, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars more. Yes. So this is very important. It's the return and on investment. Exactly. You want to take care of your yeah. clients. You're not just here to help them buy or sell a yeah. home. You help them move. You give them renovation tips. Everything. It's one of the reasons why you and your family are so successful in this business. Yes, they basically they give me the, the keys of the house and they live in Caribbean for two weeks and when they come back the house is sold for the, the most money. So, you should have your own yeah. show. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I am so busy doing that but I, I love it. But you know, it's, um, it's a... It's a pleasure to do the best thing for my clients. So. Well, look, you've seen a lot. You've got a lot of experience, especially in the Markham area. Where do you see the future of real estate in Markham? Because of the uh, huge immigration in, in Canada, I think it's a good investment to, uh, for investors to invest in real estate. Yes. And especially in Markham because, um, you know, it's uh, close to Toronto. Uh, close to 404, so the you know the it's a you know very very close to Toronto, and uh, um, the the value in long term will go up for sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's a great investment. Listen, congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much, Scott. You're the best at what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much.